In 2012, a NASA-funded researcher at the University of Iowa named Jack Scudder observed a mysterious phenomenon. When the magnetic field of the Earth connected to the magnetic field of the Sun, a portal to the unknown was created between them. Scudder named these phenomenon X-points. Intrigued by Scudder's theory, NASA flew a robotic spacecraft into one of these magnetic holes. This probe revealed that the X-point had the potential to transport objects directly to the sun's atmosphere, some 93 million miles away. As exciting as this discovery was, since it had the ability to change known physics and to open up possibilities on a better understanding of how our universe works, the scientific communities remained divided. And deeper probes of X-points have proved challenging. They are unstable, largely invisible, and their behavior is difficult to predict. But what if there are signposts that could help scientists locate X-points on demand. And is it possible these signposts were used thousands of years ago? Among ancient traditions, there are many stories of places, physical locations on the Earth, where a human, under certain conditions at certain times of the year and under certain cosmological conditions, can actually walk from this world into another world. They're called stargates. And the idea of a stargate uh, right now is not as far-fetched as it might sound. Stargates work in what we call the cosmic web. It's a connection between every star and every galaxy in the universe. As these planets rotate, they have nodes on a grid system on the planet. And you will have stargates that will appear and when everything happens just right, a stargate will open up and a person or being is able to travel through the stargate. And then you enter the cosmic web and basically travel through the sun and through the universe through these electromagnetic filaments. It appears that there are stargates that really work. We do now know that there are a magnetic flux tube connecting all of the different stars together and there's plasma that flows through that. We do know that Earth has a very strange relationship with the sun where approximately every eight minutes, there's a flux tube that forms and they are called X points. And that is actually when the solar particle emissions from the sun come to Earth. The solar particles don't always hit us. It's when this plasma tube opens up that we get all these streams and showers of particles, highly charged energetic material coming from the sun. So the science is there, the science is solid, and stargates could very well exist and that these other weird doorways carved in stone are living examples of what we can still see of a forgotten technology that was once a very useful part of those societies. If these ancient depictions of stargates can be explained by modern day science, is it possible they are in use today or were in use thousands of years ago? So now we got all that going on. So when it gets so small where it don't exist anymore, that's when the physicists leave and the quantum physics people come in. And quantum physics people say, okay, we're now in a singularity state where we have a vent horizon, we have a long tube, we don't know what's on the other end. We think it's a quasar. So this thing's now formed, it's floating through space. And it's, it's like a rubber band. You pull it and let it go and it snaps. And when it stops wiggling, that's where it's at. And it's just, they're all over the place out there. Uh, you know, since... If I've been talking to you for an hour, you, your home, you're watching this in, the town that your home is in, the state, the country, the planet, has moved 100,000 miles through space linear. So what if the planet just one day crosses the path of a mini black hole? We think that's happened. There was a case of this lady and her daughter in a poor house, this bright light showed up and she's in a standalone house. Her little girl walks into the bright light going, look how pretty, you know, like any mother's gonna dive after her child. She grabs her and when they get to the other side, they're standing in a dormitory room at the University of Toronto, Canada. 
from Chicago to Toronto in one second. The students who were studying, well, they called the police. They arrest the poor woman. So they listen to her story, and they said, they started tracking buses and planes, trains, any way she could have called a ride there. Nothing. They found nothing. They went and canvassed the neighborhood, and the neighbors saw within the hour she was right there in her house. Neighbors swear to God that she was there. I just talked to her. Seconds later, she's in Toronto, Canada. Hmm. Something happened. 